If you've been watching the channel for a while, you've certainly learned a lot about poop. And now it's time to put our knowledge to the test with this WebMD quiz. Check out the link below to follow along with me. All right, you ready to take this quiz? Then let's plunge into it. Should my poop always be as shape, true or false? Like people, poop comes in many shapes and sizes. So I'm going with false. But what type of poop should signal there's maybe a problem? If your poop looks like a rabbit snuck into your house to use the bathroom, little pellets, that suggests that you're constipated, even if you're going every day. And what type of poop might signal an alarm? Pencil thin poops that's a change now for weeks is concerning that there might be a mass growing inside of your colon. Poop is squeezing through that mass like a pasta extruder and producing spaghetti poop. And how did we do on this first question about poo? And now my favorite question number, number two, if you don't poop every day, dangerous toxins can build up in your body. Do you feel better after prepping for a colonoscopy? If you did, it's because you were massively constipated. But generally speaking, nobody feels good after a colon prep. And so why there's this myth that you need to poop more and more and cleanse out, I just don't get. So I'm going with a hard false. Yes, this is false because if cleansing your colon was healthy, people would arrive at the colonoscopy saying they'd never felt better, and almost nobody says that. For our third question in this poop quiz, can a bowel movement make you giddy? Yes, true, you can have a strong bagel response that can make you feel giddy, but I never get to see these patients, sadly, because they're having really happy poops, so why would they come to a GI doctor? All right, we're on a roll, and for question number four, how long does it usually take for something you eat to show up in your poop? 12 hours one to three days, one week. So I'm gonna go with one to three days because this is the amount of time that we ask people to hold fiber in their diet when they're preparing for colonoscopy. Corn that you eat Friday evening can show up in your colonoscopy Monday morning because we know that it takes several days for something to travel from your mouth down to your anus. I also wanted to dispel the myth that when you eat and then you have diarrhea, you're literally pooping out what you just ate. This phenomenon is the gastrocolic reflex. Food enters the stomach and it kicks poop out of the colon. It's the stomach's way of saying, wake up colon, it's time to get ready for a new batch. Question number five, what makes poop float? Is it gas, fatty foods, or both? This one is tricky because we know that oil floats atop water, and so you would think that fatty foods is a big driver of why a stool floats. But in fact, it is because gas is trapped within the poop. It's like it's wearing a little life vest. I have a caveat to share about the celiac disease that they're stating. Celiac disease usually presents with diarrhea. Now there are a subset of patients that have minimal symptoms, but they can still suffer some of the vitamin deficiencies. And so those patients who are high risk populations, say you have a family member with celiac disease, they may want to get tested. But by and large, floaters are so common, and the most common reason to have them is because of undigested plant material that bacteria in the colon subsequently digest and produce gas. But this is so much more common that I wouldn't really want to suggest that if you're having floating stools, you have celiac disease. All right, question number six, brown colored poop is a sign of good health, true or false? This feels like a little bit of a tricky question. Brown poop is normal, but it's not really a sign of good health, so I'm just gonna say false. What is brown poop? It's bile that's been broken down and digested. Bile is the pigment that colors your poo. Normal colors of bile can range from yellow to green, depending on how much there is, what kind of constituents of bile acids there are present, and how much it's been broken down. But other things you eat can also impact the pigment of your poo. Things like beets can color it, or deep red fruits, purple fruits. But by and large, it's the food and the bile that is coloring your poop. So what kind of colors are alarming? Well, if blood pigments your poop, that is a problem. Obviously, bright red poop is concerning for blood, but when blood gets digested, it turns an unnatural shade of black. The other thing that we look for is when there's no pigment to your poop, because that suggests that your bile ducts are obstructed, and the concern there is that it could be because of a cancer. These poops look like a chalky white-gray color, and that is very abnormal and concerning. For more info on poop colors, check out the video's link below. Question number seven, always get tarry black stools checked out by a doctor, true or false? Pepto-Bismol can give you black stools, but they tend to be more hard. These black tarry stools is a very distinct phenomenon as I've described, and it must always be checked out because it suggests that something is bleeding in your GI tract. That can be something like an ulcer, but God forbid it'd be a cancer, and we need to find that promptly. How often does the average person pass gas? Three to four times per day, 14 times per day, or 50 times per day. 
It's about a dozen, but really who's counting? I mean, really, how do you count something like that? Are you going to start to count? I think I might try to, but usually people are passing gas because of undigested carbohydrates. Very common reasons for that include dairy, excess sweeteners, but also plant materials that have complex carbohydrates that our GI tract can't digest, but bacteria in our colon do, and they produce gas as their byproduct. Soda can cause a lot of belching, but the carbon dioxide that produces its bubbles is readily absorbed into your bloodstream and it's actually breathed out. It doesn't make it all the way to your anus. But the excess sweeteners, natural and artificial, that is present in soda can be a cause of gas. Gas by itself does not suggest any substantial problem. It's not an alarming symptom. So if you have excess gas, take a hard look at your diet. And remember, it takes several days for things to pass from your mouth to your anus. And so expect a few days before you smell any results. Question nine, as long as you eat a healthy diet, your poop shouldn't smell bad. True or false? Uh, false, it's poop. Of course it smells bad. But how many times have we made fun of dogs for smelling each other's poop when really we're just as curious about the poop smells? Why do we have different smells of poop? Because of different things we eat that get digested by bacteria in your colon that have different byproducts of their metabolism, lending different fragrances to the final product of poop. Now you may notice that your poop smells worse when you have certain meals, those that have a lot more meat, heavier fats. And if you do notice that, perhaps that foul odor is trying to tell you something and you should listen to your nose. Do prunes really help with constipation? Yes or no? Yes, absolutely. And check out one of our other videos for a great tip on how prune butter can be a particularly fabulous way to relieve constipation. But I also want you to know there's tons of foods that have a good amount of fiber in them. Avocado are one of my favorites, and it's not just fiber that can be helpful. Blackberries have a lot of sorbitol, and that can too produce looser stools. Yes, that's right, and diet really can be a powerful medicine. All right, question number 11. Streaks of blood on your stool or on the toilet paper are most likely caused by hemorrhoids, cancer, or irritable bowel syndrome. IBS definitely does not cause bleeding. Many people confuse this with inflammatory bowel disease. Irritable bowel syndrome has no aspect of actual damage to the colon lining, and therefore there's no bleeding. Hemorrhoids are the most common reason to be seeing some bleeding, especially if you're having more frequent stools, harder stools that are aggravating those hemorrhoids, or you may be the guilty party if you're rubbing down there too hard. And while statistics may tell us that rectal bleeding is more often caused by hemorrhoids, the fact remains that the big concern here is cancer and that the only way to be sure of excluding cancer is to look with a scope. Now people will do a digital rectal exam at times, but the fact is there could be a rectal mass that's just outside of the reach of my finger. And so this is not actually a very valuable way to exclude more concerning causes. Really the only way to do that is to formally take a look by performing an endoscopic procedure to look inside of your colon. Question number 12, doctors can transplant stool from one person to another to help with unhealthy bowels. True or false? Yes, a fecal transplant can be a very successful method for clearing out a stubborn case of Clostridium difficile. And I think we're gonna see that its use will expand in the future as we better understand how changing the gut microbiome can have positive health effects. But it's important to distinguish what's the difference between a fecal transplant and taking a probiotic. A fecal transplant actually results in good bacteria taking up residence in your colon. They set roots down there, which is very different from a probiotic that you take daily, which is like a transient vagabond just passing through. It never actually comes to reside in the colon. And that is part of the reason that probiotics probably don't pan out to actually result in much clinical benefit. Okay, that gets us to the end of the quiz. And I think we did really well from everything that we've been learning about poop. If you found this information helpful, please subscribe to the channel and we can continue to learn more about poop and your GI health. Thank you for watching and be safe.